Hi everybody, this is Denise with PurplePaperParadise.com and today I am going to show you one way that you can do a print and cut with your eCraft machine. Now I have to give out uh, some kudos to Kay from Clever Someday blog about this method because she developed this method for the Cricut machine and I've kind of redesigned it a little bit to work with the eCraft. So, um, I'm going to put the link up to her blog here on the screen uh, with the directions that she has for this. She calls it the hinge method. And uh, that way if you have a Cricut machine you can go look at that and, and do this with your Cricut. Um, but that'll, uh, that method really uh, is the method that I mainly used with my Cricut machine to do a print and cut. So um, I've been playing around with trying to figure out a way to do the hinge method with the eCraft and I was having a little bit of trouble with it but I think I finally have it figured out so that's what I'm going to show you today. So first up I've got make the cut open and um, I have not been able to successfully do this yet with scale. I know that there's a way to do it um, and I have some instructions but I haven't really played around with doing this in scale too much yet so if I can get that figured out here shortly, I'll do another video uh, doing this method in scale. Um, but here we're going to um, do a pixel trace, and this is the Lettering Delights Fun Train graphic set. And so these are ping files. These are not SVGs, and I've selected this cute little train. My um, youngest son is just loves trains, so I have to do a train for him. So I'm going to go ahead and select Open. Now when you get this screen here, you're going to see all these like green blotches and that is showing you the, the outline of the pixels that um, Make the Cut is recognizing. Over here you're going to see where it says Threshold and right now it's at 127. And it will tell you right here that you can go from 1 to 255. And I'm actually going to take this all the way up to 254 and then hit Apply Changes. And now you'll see that we get a nice solid outline all the way around. We do have some openings here in the middle, which I'll show you what I'm going to do with those here in a minute. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to click here where it says Set Image as Texture. And we're going to go ahead and select Import. Okay, and I've got two layers here open, so let's go ahead and take a look at this layer. It came in way down here. So we're going to go ahead and just move this up. And you can see here that all these red lines, that'll show you where the blade is cutting. Okay, so you can see that there's a lot of like little blotches in here and we don't necessarily want to have that. So I'm going to go ahead and select the blackout button down here. And then that takes out all of those interior pieces, including this window here. And it gives me an outline of the image. Now, because you'll see that some of these lines are further away because of shadowing that is on these graphics than other places, like right here, it's right up against the line, but over here it's got some shadowing around it, so there's a little bit more of an edge. What I like to do with these is I actually like to apply a shadow layer to it, um, but we're going to do that here in just a minute. The first thing that I want to do before we do our shadow layer is I want to resize this. Now normally what I would tell you to do is to use your arrows, but we're not going to do that in this case. Now you'll see that this came in just really big. And up here where you got your width and your height, we've got some numbers in there. Now one of the things that we can do is that we can actually put in a percentage here to resize it. So if we were to put in 100% in these boxes, it would keep the size the same. Notice I've got the lock proportion box on. I want to make it smaller, so I'm going to put in a percentage that's under 100%. So I'm going to say 35%. And I'm going to hit enter, and when I do, you're going to see a little something funny happen, but just stick with me. Okay, so now you see we've got our outline is smaller, but the inside picture, we're just getting the top corner of this train. So what we need to do here now is we need to do a right mouse click and select change color texture and then select texture. Now when we pull up this box you'll see down here there's a slide scale here for the scale. Right now it's set at 
we want to scale this down to 35%. And that's why we don't want to use our arrows for this. We want to use those percentages so that we can get the texture to fit in there just the right way. And I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And now you'll see that my picture has changed. And I've got the picture is within that outline of what is actually to be cut. Now, I since because of those shadows and everything I like to put a shadow layer on this so I get a nice border all the way around so we're gonna go ahead and do that now and I'm gonna select the shadow layer button down here and let's go ahead and oh, I think right there is probably pretty good and we're gonna select accept so now under my layer properties here I've got two layers. I've got one that has my train image on it and the other one that's the shadow layer and that is what is going to be cut. So the first thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to hide my shadow layer and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this outline shapes box is unchecked which I do have it unchecked and I'm going to go ahead and print this out and I'm going to just move this down a little bit here. I probably should have moved both of them at the same time actually. But I like to kind of line it up towards the bottom of my screen because that's where we're going to be doing our cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up like so. Get my shadow on there. That looks nice. Now I'm going to hide my shadow again and I'm going to go ahead and print this on the um, printer. Okay, I've got my train all printed out, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my shadow layer. Now, I am when you use the hinge method, you have to use a piece of scrap paper, and the piece of scrap paper that I'm using is about nine inches wide by about seven and a half inches tall. So I want to make sure that my train is in those margins. So nine inches wide. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. Seven inches tall, we're definitely good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my train where it is right now. You know, maybe I'll move him down just a little bit. But I definitely want to kind of keep him close there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my train layout. And I just want to have my shadow layer on the screen. And we're going to go ahead and switch over to the other camera now so you can see what I am doing uh, with the eCraft. Hi everybody, I'm back. And what I have here is one of these vegetable cutting mats that you can get at Dollar Tree. And what I did, if you can see here, is I used a black magic marker, permanent marker, and I just drew a straight line all the way across from side to side. And then I have my piece of scrap paper here taped on only the bottom and I just use a blue painters tape but you could use masking tape or whatever you have available and you don't necessarily have to do this with the vegetable cutting mat but I find that it works a lot better because the vegetable cutting mat seems to feed into the e-craft a lot straighter so I'm gonna go ahead and feed in my mat just make sure it's all in there nice and tight load it in now, when we're doing this, one of the things is that it doesn't matter where the trolley is going from left to right, but it matters where it's going, the mat is loading in from front to back. So the reason why I have this line here is that I'm going to line it up with the edge of my cutting plate. And let me just, I'm going to remove the camera here real quick and I'll show you, um, what that looks like so okay. so now I'm this is a close-up look of the cutting mat and you'll see that I have my permanent marker lined up right with the edge of the cutting plate there you'll notice that I did not on purpose put my paper all the way over to the very edge of the mat because I wanted to be able to see that line and make sure that it's lined in correctly now one thing if you're having trouble getting this to load in you can see that I'm just using my hand here I can push this in and out manually. I don't necessarily have to use um, the buttons on the console, but I've, you know, I make sure like th on this, it's the bottom edge of the line that I drew to the bottom edge of the cutting plate. And that's the main thing that you're going to want to keep in mind with this method. So now I'm going to go ahead and set this to cut and I'll be back in a okay, second. Okay, so now you can see that it's cutting the shadow layer 
that I have into that piece of scrap paper. Okay, so now it is done cutting my shadow layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unload, but not all the way. This is the key point. I only want to unload until I can get this piece of paper loose. And then you can see I can remove my train there. Let me adjust the camera here so you can see a little bit better. So there's my mat with this layer. Okay. So now I've got my printed graphic that I want to uh, get cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple pieces of tape handy. And I'm going to actually just use this cutout to line it up with where I want it. Now this can be a little tricky because we can't unload this mat all the way from the machine. If you do that then your left and right isn't going to be accurate. But you can see there that I've got it pretty well lined up. So now I'm going to take my piece of tape and I'm actually going to tape it down at the top here. And I'm going to remove my hinge now. I'm going to tape it at the bottom. And I, I like to do it on the corners just to kind of prevent the rollers from accidentally lifting it up. And this is why you don't want to use a piece of scrap paper that's 12 inches in length going this way. You want to be able to not completely unload your mat so that you can remove that hinge layer. So now I'm going to go ahead and load my mat back in and get that line. And I'm going to move the trolley out of the way here so I can see that I've got it right. And I do. I've got it lined up just like I did before. I'm going to adjust my pressure down a little bit and now I'm going to go ahead and hit cut again. Now if you try to do this and it doesn't work right, there's really only one of two things that could have gone wrong. It's either that you didn't, when you tape this piece of paper down onto your mat, you didn't tape it quite right, it was maybe a little bit off, or when you either loaded the mat the first time or the second time, you didn't have your lines lined up just right on the sides here. And this method I have found to, this vegetable cutting mat is priceless. I mean, for a dollar for a package of two, um, if you have a Dollar Tree near you, definitely go get some of these. If for some reason you don't have a Dollar Tree near you, um, send me an email and I'd even be willing to grab a couple for you and send them to you or something because it really, really does help out a lot. Um, especially with this method. I mean, you can see here it's already given me a perfect cutout. And now I'm going to go ahead and unload. And there's my print and cut train. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions, give me a call or give me an email. My email's on my blog www.purplepaperparadise. And uh, you can also find me a lot on the eCraft Crafters Yahoo group, and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again.